they exclude generally people living with HIV. The only way to fight stigma and shame is to shine light on it. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life. We're all about turning positive into a plus. Right now, advocates, doctors, scientists, they're all meeting in Australia for the 12th International AIDS Society Conference on HIV Science. And one of the important topics being discussed is HIV migration, mobility and health equity. And joining me now to tell me more about that is a keynote speaker, David Harry. Good to see you, David. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, Carl. Interestingly enough, apart from all the science talk, there are a lot of interesting forums and discussions. One that you're taking part in, which is called Act Now Community Forum on HIV Migration, Mobility and Health Equity, and really goes to what we're talking about. I was shocked and am shocked to learn that Australia, a country that is leading the way in getting on top of HIV, has these rules that if you want to become a permanent resident, if you've gone there on visas and done everything right, but you want to become a permanent resident, you still have to have an HIV test, and if it's positive, bye-bye. Yes, uh, Australia is a special case. Uh, jointly with Canada, they say they have no HIV-specific restrictions. However, they restrict residents and work permit applications from anybody with a chronic disease because they make uh, a mathematical complex mathematical co calculation of the cost of the person to the health system and on that basis they exclude generally people living with HIV. Canada has become a little bit more relaxed about this because treatments have become cheaper but uh, Australia is still, is still very anal uh, New Zealand had the same uh, the same policy until a few years ago. They relaxed. However, there is still some uncertainty in New Zealand. Uh, we should learn more at the meeting in in Australia. I have specific specifically asked uh, to get a little bit more clear information on New Zealand. Uh, it's not as rough anymore, but uh, it's not without problems still. It seems you're the keynote speaker at that event. What? are some of the key messages that you want those in attendance um, in Australia to really understand and hear? Key target is get rid of these restrictions and, and get organized at country level where you have restrictions in place. Form coalitions, seek help, collaborate with UNAIDS. Middle East is a very nasty ground. Uh, and uh, get, get out and seek help. Uh, it, it requires pressure from outside and actually countries like the Emirates and Qatar, they get dependent on tourism uh, and Saudi Arabia too. So you can actually exert economic pressure on these countries to, to adopt their laws. Uh, but it requires an active local civil society and <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not so positive for the region uh, to to make up their minds quickly. Well, and interestingly, uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, there, there is a story. There's a fantastic video that that is accompanying, um, you know, this session, and it speaks of a, of a gentleman uh, from the Middle East. Hello, my name is Ahmed. I live in Morocco, and I am HIV positive. Who? won the green card lottery to come to America and anyone who's migrated to America, myself included, knows about this green card lottery. It is it is like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow if you get it. Um, it's very difficult. This man applied and he should be in all rights and purposes be able to come into the country now as someone living with HIV but he had to have health tests and he had to have them done in the Middle East and that's where the problems arose, right? No. Uh, he had to have health tests, yes. Uh, he got in touch with me, actually, and, and uh, was seeking for help. It's a, it's a desperate case. I have never seen something like that. He told uh, his health tests were TB. Uh, and when his positive TB results were delivered, uh, the physician asked him, by the way, uh, do you have HIV? And he honestly said yes. So the doctor asked for a repeated 
uh, for the TB tests to be repeated and then told him we will not analyze the results uh, before the end of the year where his green card application would expire. So this is not legal restrictions, this is uh, discriminatory behavior by a US uh, consular doctor and U US federal employee. Uh, and there is no possibility to appeal or to react. And furthermore, I, I think I think the doctor even said to the person, if you hadn't told me you were HIV positive, I would have signed this and you'd be on your way to the United States. I mean... Correct. Correct. So much about telling other people you're HIV. Shut up. <laughs> Deny it. <laughs> How do we get beyond this, David? How do we make that change? It, 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 it really is, it requires people like you and me and those of us in the HIV community to really not shut up about it, right? Yes, and it requires global collaboration, exchange and global pressure and local pressure on governments to overcome the situation. Uh, you know, in many countries, people have a completely crazy picture about people with HIV. It was in Amsterdam a few years ago. There was the big AIDS conference was in Amsterdam and uh, we had just updated the site and had a press conference. And I was approached by a Pakistani journalist uh, who came to me and said, uh, listen, are you really living for what was it then, 35 years with HIV? And I said, yes, of course. Uh, and then he said, but you don't look like. Uh, and then he said, uh, would you be able, would you be happy to give me an interview? And so he did. So in, in countries like Pakistan, in the Middle East, people have a, a terrible picture about people living with HIV. They have no idea how good we do. And uh, this is probably one of the cards we haven't played well enough uh, in the past years. We say U equals U, but what does it tell to people? What does what does this concept tell to people who are not info informed or involved, who have no clue about HIV? It says nothing. So the slogan, as, as good as, his, as it sounds to us, is probably not so effective as a public health me message to a larger audience. Interesting stuff. David Harry from HIVtravel.org. It has been a pleasure chatting to you. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Carl. That is going to do it for this Plus Talk. Remember, you can follow us across social media. We are at Plus Life Media or go to the website, pluslifemedia.com. Until next time, take care of yourselves and be nice to each other. See ya.